we do this thing where we, we, <laughs> there's so much hindsight um, and we, we make bizarre statements and th- there's, there's two out there, which are interesting. Let me play for you what Brett Favre had to say. Okay. This is Brett Favre on first take talking about the Philadelphia Eagles. I actually thought that they should have kept Nick Foles rather than Carson Wentz just based off of production and w- where they got to. That, you know, they won a Super Bowl with Foles. And uh, that was a little bit surprising. But they're obviously banking on his upside. Um, you know, I, I, how many more years do you, you let it linger before you, you stick with him or you cut bait? Uh, that's a question they only can answer. I don't know what happened to first take. I I don't know what happened. Okay. But it is laughable. The, the, the Max Kellerman thing who on a weekly basis assaults Carson Wentz is so laughably disconnected from reality. I'm not arguing that Carson Wentz hasn't played great. I'm, I'm I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and go like, Oh, Carson Wentz has been the best quarterback in the national football league. But I would also point out that for a second straight year, they're likely going to make the playoffs. For a second straight year, they're going to win their division. For a second straight year, he's playing with, uh, you know, he played so far more than half the season without four starting linemen and without all of his starting wide receivers. So let me just ask Brett. Did anybody ask Brett on first first fake? Anybody ask first fake? Uh, hey, Brett, how would you have done if we took out all of your wide starting wide receivers and four of your starting offensive linemen. And oh yeah, by the way, we'll take out a running back as well. How would you have done? Would you have been uh, super duper productive? Now this year he does have 12 touchdowns and 12 interceptions. It has not been easy. And at times he's forced the football. He's he's done. I, I can't make it up, but I would also tell you that, there isn't anyone in that organization that's sitting there going, man, we should have held on to Nick Foles. The, the Bears defense, which, by the way, is coached by the same coaches that were in Philadelphia, minus Doug Peterson. Okay. But, you know, two of those three coaches were in Philadelphia at the time. He's with the Bears, and they can't score. <laughs> I, I mean... It's not like the Nick Foles experiment in Chicago is great. It's not like the Nick Foles experiment in Jacksonville is great. It's just not. It's nothing more than Jeff Hostetler winning a Super Bowl with the Giants. He's the backup. It's a good backup who's been a starter. We've seen enough Nick Foles to know who Nick Foles is. There wasn't one moment in Nick Foles' career where he was ever mentioned for the league's MVP. There has been for Carson Wentz. I don't know what Carson Wentz did to Max Kellerman or to Max Kellerman's family, or said to him on Reddit. I don't know what it is. But literally, they're the only ones sitting there going, man, I really get to think about a quarterback change. They're not thinking about a quarterback change. Do you know why? Because he's surrounded by nothing. And while being surrounded by nothing, they're still in first place and going to win the division, and they've won two games in a row. I love Brett Favre. Brett Favre is going to go down as one of the forgotten absolute superstars of the game. We talk about greatest quarterbacks of all time. People forget that before Peyton Manning's last two years, right? Last year he won a Super Bowl, but he wasn't very good. There was a lot of talk. Peyton Manning's the greatest quarterback ever. Now that's been supposedly boat raced by by, uh, Tom Brady because Brady has won a couple of Super Bowls since then. Favre was right there in anybody's discussion. He not only has the Lou Gehrig record, you know, for being the Ironman, but he was a great player, won a Super Bowl, and won a couple of MV- handful of MVPs. But the idea that because Nick Foles was productive, can, can, I, can I do something real quick? All right, we, we got a moment for it. Does anybody actually remember Nick Foles' game log in, uh, in 2017? Do, do you do you remember how it went down? Cause I do. Yeah, 2017. Nick Foles came in and replaced Carson Wentz. They were the best team in the league. 
Carson Wentz was 11 and one as a starter, right? And the the first game he came in, he was not good. He was not good. You know, first game he came in, he really really struggled um, against uh, against the Rams. Then they beat the Giants, who were bad. Then they beat the Raiders. He was 19 of 38 for 163. This is when the Raiders were terrible. Then they played the Cowboys, the last game of the regular season, and they just wanted him to have a couple of good series, and he didn't. He was 4 of 11 with one interception. Then they played the Falcons, and he was okay. But if you remember the Falcons, they beat him 15 to 10, but Julio Jones, kind of a bad jump ball thrown to him in the end zone. Otherwise, the Falcons would have beaten them at their place. He was not good. He was great against the Vikings. And he was not good, but he was great against the New England Patriots. He played two great games. Two great games in big moments. And that deserves a ton of respect. And you know what happens when you play two big games in two big moments? You become the Super Bowl MVP. But you know what you do not become? You don't become the franchise quarterback. It was Carson Wentz. Because Carson Wentz can carry a team, just like he did last year, where he carried them to the playoffs. And this year, he's going to carry them to the playoffs with a depleted, dysfunctional roster. So I don't know what first fake did to Max Kellerman, but literally the only show, the only place on earth where they're talking about running off Carson Wentz out of Philadelphia is first fake. Derek Jones was uh, his weekly hit on 105.3, the fan in Dallas, was asked if they'll take a quarterback in the draft this year. You ask me if it's crazy to bring the idea up, and I'm answering you, yes. <laughs> We're playing <laughs> games here, guys, but it, it's not the thing to be talking about at all. You know, Dak is our quarterback. Um, okay, Dak, Dak is a quarterback. And I, I think, look, Dak has been helped out by the fact that when he got hurt, the entire league caught their breath, Right. When Dak got hurt, both teams came over and dapped him up. The team has completely and totally, they went from a team that was a bad defense away from being a playoff team, maybe a Super Bowl team, to a team that was just bad. Right Now, I know Andy Dalton got hurt. The line has collapsed. They have a lot of issues or whatever. But that's Jerry being Jerry. Going all in on Dak Prescott. I guess my question becomes, what? I like Dak. I think he's good. I will uh, continue to believe he's not one of the elite quarterbacks in the league. I know the stats before he got hurt would tell you otherwise. He's really, he's good. He's solid. Nothing. You can absolutely win with Dak. And in many ways, I would put him ahead of the, that Kirk Cousins, Derek Carr, they're good enough, but not great, right? I don't think he holds you back. So maybe he's climbing in that list. But, like, Jerry, if you feel that way, why didn't you sign this guy? I don't... Do I think Dak asked for... And and never forget this. I've seen to be the only national sports radio host to remember this. They offered Dak five years. He wanted four. This wasn't a case of, well, they didn't want him. They wanted him. But, again, if you feel that way, like, get the deal done. Figure out a way to get the deal done. Everybody has a trigger point. Now, right now, I think you could probably go to Dak and there's a a deal to be made. It's like in my business. People try and make, now we're we're still in some levels under quarantine. COVID numbers are spiking up. This is a good time for companies that want to save a little bit of money going like, we don't know about 2021 and quarter one and quarter two. Everybody's trying to save a little money even though I think it's reasonable to think the economy will come back very, very strong once we all get off of whatever form of lockdown we're under. He's got got a broken ankle. He's not going to play the rest of this year. He's still going to get paid 30-some-odd million. There's a deal to be made. To answer the question for Jerry, it's not crazy. I totally did not crazy to think, do you take a quarterback in the draft? Because teams who want to fill out their roster with talented players are doing so with quarterbacks under a rookie contract. And I do think that in truth, 
the Dallas Cowboys would be really prudent to go, hey, Dak's our guy, and then in the back of their mind think, let's just see where we finish and see who's available and see how the dust settles. Um, but it's not a real question right now because we don't know where they're going to fall in the draft. We don't know what his rehab's going to be like. And we don't know about the salary cap for future years and about the ability to fill out the roster with the rest of the team. So, I mean, like, look, the, the logic is, why would you abandon ship on Dak? Why would you jump ship on Dak? Like, that's how you lose a locker room, is player gets injured and you say, I'm out. 